The transaction was our first investment in Austria. Uh, it was about $31 million, and it was a net lease investment in a DIY or a home improvement store, a uh, big box freestanding home improvement store just outside of Vienna. It's important to OP Carry because it was our first deal in Austria, and I think any time we get to enter a new market, we're really expanding the capacity that we can offer new clients. Uh, you know, we're, we're following corporate clients around the world, and if we're not in countries where they're active, then we're not really adding any value for them. Also from the business side, it's good for us to have new markets where we're seeing new investments and we can prove ourselves as being a capable investor. When you're talking about retail, in particular freestanding big box retail, whether it's 15 years or five years or one year, I think the question of criticality is very hard to answer. Uh, if you look at a single standalone property and you were to say, how important is this one property to a large multinational retailer, whether it's Hornbach or, or uh, Walmart or anybody or Carrefour, uh, the reality is that there's no single property that really controls their business. And that's the nature of buying retail assets. Uh, and so when we look at these retail deals, we look at the 15 years as saying, this is the time that we have to earn our, our equity back. Uh, this is the cushion that we have, if the residual is not what we thought it was, to protect our investors. Uh, so we look at retail deals that are on short leases as being very tough to figure out criticality. A 15-year lease gives us the, the luxury of, of figuring out what uses there might be in the future and what might happen to the property in the future. Uh, also, this was a 15-year lease renewal. And so uh, international retailers are very savvy about properties and they wouldn't have renewed this lease for 15 years had it not been of importance to them. And I think that when we see a 15-year renewal or a 10-year renewal, and any long-term renewal is really a sign of commitment the retailer has to the property. And they know property-level revenues, they know growth, so if they're willing to be there for 15 more years, that's a good sign to us that's a critical property. I think it's a very simple bricks-and-mortar approach. Uh, I think you have to see the property, you have to go there, you have to understand what sort of uh, visibility it has from the streets, what sort of footfall it has, how busy it is during the day. Uh, a, a property that's not well located, it doesn't matter who's operating it. Uh, a property that's well located near a large population center with good access to the road, uh, there'll always be a demand for good retail space. And so I think the risk is getting caught uh, believing a retail story that doesn't really pan out. Uh, and I think if you, if you go to the property you, and you know the property, you understand the property, you kind of can uh, assuage some of the risks of, of over-investing in retail. They're a very well-known name. Uh, I think it's not just the reputation of Hornbach that made it easy to underwrite them. I think uh, the fact that they're a, a double B rated credit was very important to us. Uh, they're also a publicly listed company. And I think that it's a question of the transparency of financials. There can be a, a large privately held company that everyone thinks dominates the market or knows dominates the market. But if you don't have transparent financials, if you really can't look at what their balance sheet is made of, how they're financing themselves, what their cash flows look like, if that transparency is not there, then underwriting is really non-existent. And uh, a lot of real estate deals we see involve uh, tenants and companies that don't provide financials. And we have a tough time getting our arms around that because if we can't understand the tenant from a financial perspective, we can't really understand the deal. I think the risks that we see, uh, for, in particular for Hornbach, uh, you know, DIY is a, uh, is a very competitive sector. Uh, I think the saturation of the DIY markets uh, in Europe is probably the biggest risk we face. Does Hornbach need this property in 15 years? Uh, does it have a property maybe a few miles away that, that it built and is performing better? Uh, oversaturation is generally the biggest risk, I think, for all big box retail, uh, because when you have so many big boxes around, there's only so many things that can get, be sold there. I think we felt very comfortable, like I said before, the 15-year lease term really gives you a chance to, to step back and say, if I earn all of my equity out in the next 15 years, how low can my loss be in, in year 15 and still have uh, no loss to my investors? And that's the kind of cushion we're looking for when you're making a retail bet. I think as a net lease investor, there's tremendous growth for us. Uh, at our core, we're a sale lease back investor. But the reality is that the sale lease back market is not an enormous market. And we've been really trying to do high levels of volume. And if you want to do 1 billion, 2 billion euros or dollars a year in acquisitions, uh, the pure sale lease back market won't provide that to you. And so 
our transition to the net lease market is, is a very smooth transition because our core competency in sale leasebacks translates very well to net lease investments. Uh, net lease investments provide us with uh, uh, an order of magnitude of more volume for us to do in Europe than we could ever have done in terms of pure sale leasebacks. And I think that shift is evident from last year where we did about a billion dollars of, of total investment in Europe, uh, the bulk of which was, uh, was net lease investments. Well, we still have a very pan-European approach, so there's no single country that we really try and focus on too much or overly focus on, because the fact is that yields change in different markets, and different markets get hot, different markets get cold. Uh, we have to see what's out there and really find the best risk-adjusted yield for our investors. So I think for us, we have a high expectation of finding a lot of business all throughout Europe. Uh, where that will be, uh, obviously Eastern Europe is still a very active market for us. We get decent yields out there relative to Western Europe. Uh, but then again, you see a deal like Hornbach in Austria, which is a, a core Western European market. Uh, we can still find every once in a while a good opportunity there to take advantage of.